Hi everyone. Um, let me get over here on my little camera so that way I can introduce kind of what we're doing. Uh, this is another tech talk here at Cold Desi. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be using our Viper 2 to print to a couple little planks of wood uh, that I found back in our little scrap heap back there in the back. So it's standard piece of pine um, from like Home Depot. It's untreated. Uh, if you did try to do the like weather treated wood, the, probably it's not going to give a good adhesion because it's made to repel water and we're using a water-based ink. So, uh, But natural woods, things like that, work really, really well. Uh, I mean, I've even printed to pallet wood. So those are things that you can try out. All right. So um, if the wood is real coarse or something like that, um, you can do a light sand to it just with like a, like a pretty good a fine grit so that way it's nice and smooth. Um, I haven't done that to these, but this does have a nice finished side, so it's not too rough or anything like that. Okay, so we're going to do like a little mosaic. Even though these are individual pieces, I'm going to print across all three of them at the same time, just to kind of show you a technique, and then you can build things up. And if you're crafty and do kind of do the math right and the spacing, you could do large objects uh, and then be able to piece them together like a mosaic. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to prepare our wood. Um, just like with any dark shirt printing, when you use white ink, you have to have that white ink pretreatment for it to be able to adhere and to solidify. It's like a chemical reaction. So what we are going to do, we're, I'm going to use my Spider Mini back here uh, to uh, pretreat the wood. And then I'm going to use my heat press just to lay the wood up there so that way it kind of dries before I print to it. Okay, pull these out here. I'm not going to pre-treat the entire thing. Uh, it does hang off the edge just a little bit. To create a little bit less of a mess, you can put a scrap shirt on top of this base so that way it doesn't spray over here on the sides. But I'm just going to wipe it up, so I think it'll be okay. All right, so we'll line these up, try to get them centered if they're a little bit longer than the 20 inches. Okay. And it doesn't need an incredible amount of pretreatment, so I'm just going to go up to like a 7. I mean, it, it's variable. Uh, the more you put on there, the longer it takes to dry. But the, um, if you don't put enough, then the white ink will not um, congeal quick enough. All right, so let's see here. All right. What I'm going to use is a little foam roller. And I'm just going to spread that pretreatment out so that way it gets in there really nice. You could literally take a paintbrush with the um, with this pretreatment on the wood here, and just paint the wood with uh, with pretreatment, and it would work fine as well. Let's pull these out real quick. All right. See if I can find a little paper towel or something to spread that around better. I'll just use this little sponge I have here. Kind of evenly put it out. see this on full screen um, if the camera is shrunk down if you hold your mouse on the actual uh, video there's a little gray box down in the corner and it will go to full screen um, and actually let me turn the computer screen off for a second and that might help you out as well anytime if you do lose your video or anything like that down on your taskbar there will be a little blue so like snowflake looking thing if you click on that it usually will reactivate it and if not, just kind of log out and log back in. That will also work. All right, so to dry these, I'm just going to place these over here on my heat press base. I do not have to press it. All right, this little pad is not necessary either. It's a Nomax pad. We use that for our rhinestones and things like that. Okay, I'll clean that up in a little while. Take this off right here. I have already primed up my machine uh, this morning, so I do know it has a good nozzle check. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to print directly onto these metal platens here, but I need to know where to place this wood so I can have accurate placement of my image. All right, so let's see if we can get into this real quick. And I'm going to show you how to set this up. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and do some measurements so that way I know how wide my design is and um, or what I want it to be and also uh, how tall I want it to be. 
All right, so if I've got these three pieces of wood right next to each other, they're all the same length. This is going to be 10, 10 and a half inches by, let's see, 23 and a half. All right, so let me go back over here to Photoshop. I'm going to turn the video off real quick so it'll, the screen will go blank. And now I'm going to turn on the uh, computer screen. All right, first thing I'm going to do is go to my uh, Photoshop here. Um, if the GoToMeeting panel is covering up uh, your screen so you can't see it, up in the top of the GoToMeeting panel, there is a uh, two arrows that point together, and that will minimize it up to the top of your screen. And then you can also hit that arrow to make it go back out if you need to type a question. OK, so let me move this thing out of the way real quick. And inside our Photoshop, I decided just to go ahead and print a basic VTG logo um, for this exercise. Uh, I can hang it up here in the office and, it's, uh, and go from there. But technically, you could print whatever image you wanted to whatever. You're basically calling the piece of wood a piece of paper. It's pretty neat that way. OK, so let's go ahead and I'm going to create a document now about the size of the wood panels that I have. So I'm going to go File, New. I'm going to go 300 dpi, transparent background. Um, the width was 23 and a half, so 23.5. And then the height was, again, 10 and a half. All right, so that's my document here. All right. Let me go ahead and get rid of these questions. All right, so now that I have this document here, that's going to be the size of my panel. All right, so now I'm going to create a template um, or a basically a box that's this exact shape, and then I'm going to print that box to my empty platen. It'll print just a black line on it, and that way I know where to place my boards, so that way they're nice and centered and I can control my logo. All right, so from here, what I'm going to do with this untitled document, I'm just going to go over here to my paint bucket. I'm going to switch my foreground color to white. So if I ever just need to go to black and white, um, I can always click this little icon right here. And this becomes an RGB black, and this is the uh, 255 white. All right, if I want to switch them, I have that little switch right there. Now this is my foreground color. So I'm going to click on my paint bucket, and I'm just going to paint bucket this little rectangle here to make sure that I know that it is just an object and not a background. I can move it around. You can see it actually has that shape. So I'll just hit Control Z, make sure it goes back. So right now we've got an exact measurement, uh, a rectangle that's the exact size of my board. All right, so now I've got to add that little black line to it. So down here in the Layers tablet, you have the um, FX button in Photoshop. Um, in Corel or something like that, you might just have to add a stroke. Uh, I'm not really a Corel power user, so um, definitely if you need help with that, um, give us a call. All right, so I'm going to click on my FX button. I'm going to choose Stroke. My properties for that stroke come up here. All right, so two pixels is fine, just a small little thin line. I don't want a whole bunch of ink going down so it doesn't smear or something to that order. All right there. And then I have the choice of where to put the stroke. If I did it to the outside of this rectangle, that means it would be outside my document area. If I did it to the center, half of the stroke would be outside of it, half of the stroke would be on the inside. So I'm going to do an inside stroke. So that way it puts a black line right to the inside here and um, doesn't, uh, uh, so I'll be able to actually see it. So let's hit OK here. Now that I have that stroke, I'm just going to go ahead and flatten this image so I get rid of that special effect. So now basically it is just a rectangle with, a, uh, with the exact size of 23 and a half by 11 or 10 and a half. OK, so now I'm going to save it. File, Save As. I'll just save it in my pictures. This will be my wood template. You can name it whatever if you're doing a special project or anything like that. Uh, JPEG's fine because we're going to be printing just this white, uh, or I'm sorry, just the uh, black line onto the platen, so that's perfectly okay. 
So I'll go to Wig Template. Click OK. So now I'm going to minimize my RIP software. And I'm going to come over here to my white shirt queue because the white shirt queues do not print with white ink. So, because all I want to print is the black line that encompasses that rectangle. All right, so I'm going to go on my queue. I'm, since I'm using the Viper 2, I'll come down here. I'll just use uh, White Graphics Production. All right, so let me zoom out so you can see my platen here. So this would be it on the machine. This would be that front corner if I was standing at the front of the machine on the uh, right-hand side. So, but I need to have these boards stretch all the way across. So I need that gap to go away. So what I can use is my one-up platen. So that way it goes across both platens. So now I'll import my image. Call it wood template. Click OK. I'm going to rotate it 270 degrees. And I'm going to make sure to go up to 100%. So that way it'll be the exact size I need it to be. 23 and a half by 10 and a half. Just fits. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to leave this centered. All right, I can tell there's a little black stroke line on there. I can see it right there. All right, so now since I don't have the, the machine ready, I'm just going to go ahead and pre-rib this by clicking on spool job. All right, so now I'm going to switch back over here to my camera. Switch off of the screen. Dokey. And now I'm going to get my machine ready. Okay. So we've already set this up. I like to leave this off of the or not on here, so that way any kind of atomized ink can get out of this space. Uh, it'll help me in the long run with having to clean all the internal components. All right. So we've got an empty platen up here. I'm just going to hit the up button to bring it up to the gap. Okay. And then I'm going to load it. All right, so I'll make sure my layer light is not blue. I just want a single layer because I'm doing like a white shirt print. So I'm going to click over here on my RIP software and send that job over. I'm going to hit print. The machine will receive it and start to print it. So here I'll bring over so y'all can see what the line looks like. So enjoy the ride. Let's see if I can take this off here and I'll lift the camera up. So here I'll cover it up real quick. So, as you can see, it's just printing that one little thin stroke line directly on the platen here. Okay. Okay, if you can't see me, click down there on that bottom snowflake. It's that little blue snowflake on the bottom of your screen on your taskbar. Okay. So just to show you again, for the people that did, lost their video there for a second, I'll lift this up here. And show you that it's printing this little black stroke line. It's on both sides there. All right. So as you can see right up here in the front, we have the little stroke line that's printing across there.
So with this technique that I'm showing you and how I created that template for this irregular shape, say I was printing a mouse pad. So instead of using the measurements for that, I would measure the mouse pad and print in the, a square directly onto the platen at the size of my mouse pad. And then when you see me import the image on top of it and then print it in the exact same place, you can use that technique for all kinds of different weird objects and stuff. So it's an easy way to control where the placement of your image goes. favorite things to do is go up to like Michael's uh, craft shop and get um, just random objects up there like wooden objects, canvases, things like that and just print to them. As long as I can get it in the machine and I can control the in and out and the back and forth, you can pretty much print anything. Has anybody been having any kind of problems or anything like that that they would want me to touch base on? Y'all feel free to ask any questions y'all would like. So what I'm going to do is get my wood on here and place it like I was going to print it. So I'm going to go ahead and lower this bed down. If I was doing a, an, a thicker type of good or something that does not fit within that space, I would definitely have to uh, either create my own platen base and create my own templates and stuff like that to be able to do something like a specialty project. Okay, so I'll go ahead and line these up here. I'll pull it out a little bit so I can see it better. I try to get it as centered as best as possible. I know my measurement, it wasn't an exact measurement, but I like going to even numbers. So I try to make sure that I have the same amount of space, top and bottom. My boards are even. And then pretty much centered. All right. So now I'll go ahead and just slide my platen in manually. So that way it goes, this part of the board is just inside the cover here. So that way it sees the gap lasers. Raise it up until it hits the gap. And then I'll manually pull it through and let it adjust accordingly. I can always scan objects just by pushing them in slowly like this to see if they're uh, like something's higher or lower or something to that order. So I'm going to go ahead and hit load. Okay. And then I will turn on my layer lights because I'm going to do a dark image. Well, the wood, uh, we have a question. Um, how does the wood stay in place during printing? It's heavy enough and the machine doesn't shake enough where it would actually move the wood. Just the weight of the wood itself it'll stay in there at the same place. You don't want to sling it around or anything like that. Okay. So now that I've got this ready to go, let's go back over here to the software. Let me switch the camera. I'm going to turn the camera off real quick and turn back on the screen. Okay. So now we've got to get our image into that template that we just did. So, what we'll do first is I'm going to go back over here to um, Photoshop. All right. And let's see. Let me move these little question box out of the way. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same wood template. Okay. 
and, and unless I wanted to, uh, to save it for something particular, but this is just an example. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click where it says background and I'm going to turn it back into a layer. And that's all I did was just double click the layer name and then it turns it into a layer instead of a background. It unlocks it. So then I can actually take uh, and get rid of this little square. All right, so let's go over here to my BTG logo first. All right, so this is a nice one, but it's only about four inches tall, but it is 300 DPI. So I'm going to show you a little trick of how I can take a, a smaller image and blow it up and still keep its pixel resolution. It's a pretty neat little thing that Photoshop does for you. So I'm going to pull this down here. This one. All right, so now I've got that free floating here in a window. I'll get my move tool. And I'm going to move all these. Over to here. Okay, so now I can just take this back up here to the top, remount it. Now I've got my little image here that's ready to be printed. Okay, but that's a little bit too small. So now that I have those three in here, those were my three layers. Uh, the three layers being like the inside is blue, uh, the yellow background, and also the, uh, the outline. Okay. So what I can do with all three of these selected, I can right click and convert it to a smart object. What that basically does is it locks in the, that at this size, its resolution. So no matter how big I stretch it out, it'll keep that same resolution as when it started. So here, let's try this out. So we're going to, we're going to stretch it. So we'll go Control T, which is free transform. And you'll notice it has the X across it. So that way it's, I know it's a smart object. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch this out. I'm going to hold the shift key so it stays proportional so it doesn't get oblong. Make this nice and big. I'm going to make a big old DTG logo. And even though it is pixelated on the screen right now, it'll resample it in a second. So I can move this around and it kind of see the little pink lines that pop up. That's how I know it's centered. So then when I let go, hit enter to confirm the transformation. It resamples it. Now it is nice and crisp again. Pretty easy little thing there. Okay, so now I'm going to get rid of this layer because I don't need to print that black box anymore. But it's still the exact same size as the um, as the template here. All right. So now let's save this. We'll go file, save as. And I'm going to do this as a PNG format. The reason is because it flattens it. It takes all the special effects away and things like that. Um, and I'm going to save it without the layers. Okay? So I hit save. The reason I do that is because sometimes uh, the RIP software doesn't like special effects or those little add-on features that Photoshop adds in. Okay, so now that that's saved, let's go back over here to the RIP software. Same exact template and things like that. All right, so... I do want to print white ink on this, okay? So I'm going to have to use one of the cues that has white ink in it, whether it be the black shirt cue or the color shirt cue. I would not choose the black shirt cue for the simple fact that it has not any blackout turned off. And I do have black in my image, and I do want it to print. So that puts me over into the color shirt cue. And my image does have a transparent background, so I know that it will print in here and not have a big white background. So let's go, we'll do color quality. I'm going to minus this out so you can see it a little bit better. Choose that exact template that I did when I printed the um, rectangle. And then I'm going to import this image. So there's my wood template as the PNG. Click open. I'm going to rotate it 270 degrees. And I'm going to make it 100%, just like I did before. But you notice, before, I did not move it or change the uh, position of it. 
So I will do the exact same thing. So that way I know this is still going to print in the exact same place as my template did. But now the rectangle is gone and just the image is there. Yes, uh, the question that was just uh, typed out was, does the pretreatment keep the image from bleeding and distorting? Yes, it does. As long as there's not like a water, uh, water treatment on the wood. Okay. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and pre-rip it. This is probably going to be a pretty expensive job because it's really big. All right. Oh, I'm going to cancel this. I just forgot about something. So let's back up here. I'm going to clear that error. So I'm going to go into its individual drop properties. Now, if I wanted to, I could set up an actual queue and call it my wood queue or with white ink and one queue with wood without white ink. So I can do both. And then if you need help setting up a custom queue or something like that, just call into the support line and uh, we can kind of walk you through that to see what you're trying to do. Because usually when people are doing like wood projects and things like that, they need to have it specialized for that particular medium that they're printing on. So sometimes you have to make adjustments. All right, so from here, I'm going to change just the individual job properties. If I double clicked on the Q tab, I would change the Q properties. But if I double click on the job, then I can change its individual job property. All right, so now I'm going to go to my print mode overrides and printer. Oh, I need to undo the uh, spooling that I did. I got to open the page back up. All right, now I'm going to double click and now I can get into my layer profiles. Okay, so these are my layer profiles. It's definitely going to print an underbase and then a color layer right over top of it. I'm going to go to my show processing options. All right. A piece of wood is definitely not as absorbent as a cotton t-shirt. So it definitely does not need as much white ink to go down. So what we're going to do is we're going to reduce this white ink down to say 50% to start with. All right. Now I'm just picking this number out of air. <laughs> I know that irritates people sometimes, but it's one of those things that you have to make adjustments on the fly for the medium that you're printing on. All right. So by printing it at 50%, I will sit there and look at it. And while it's printing that first couple bands, if it looks like it's too much, I'll just hit the emergency stop, wipe that stuff off, maybe even sand it down a little bit. So because wood's cool like that, you can erase it by whatever image you put on it by just sanding it down. Cool little th trick there as well. All right. So we're going to do a 50% maximum ink percentage. This actually chokes up, uh, chokes back how much white goes down. All right. I'm going to do a little bit higher of a choke. So that way, uh, what choke does is it basically shaves off pixels around the edge of the white layer. So that way it helps tuck it underneath the color layer. You can go too far. Um, usually five is my sweet spot but you can go higher if needed. All right, so now I'm going to look at my color layer. It's got highlights turned on. So that way for the visibly white areas in the, um, in the color layer, it will print a little bit of extra white just to give a little bit more pop. All right, so I'll click OK here. Now I'm going to pre-rip it. Let's see how much this thing is going to cost. I'm thinking maybe like four bucks because there's going to be a lot of white going down. I don't know. We did reduce it down half, so we'll find out. So $2.51 to print this big logo across this piece of wood. All right, so now I'm going to switch over. I'm going to go ahead and hit print. I do have the uh, machine loaded and ready to go. I have not moved that wood. It's still in the exact position of where that template was printed, that little rectangle. So all I need to do now is hit print. Let's check my port configuration just in case. I haven't used this queue with this printer yet today. So to always check it, I can slide this little thing out. There's that little line that, that separates the columns. And if I drag it out, I can actually see the USB numbers. So whenever I do choose, I always choose it from the drop-down menu. Even if it says USB like 04 or something like that, 
I'm always going to pick it from the drop down menu and click yes to do all of them. All right, so close. So now it's going to print. So while this is going, I'm going to go ahead and switch off of the screen. It's going to go away and I'm going to click on my video camera. If it goes blank on you on your screen, click down there on that blue snowflake. And then you should see the video. Let's bring you over here real quick and we'll take a look how it's doing. So, let's see if we can get you in here real quick. So, the white ink definitely looks good. It's not puddling. And it's just giving a nice, even coat. And as you can tell, it's going across all three pieces of wood. As long as I don't touch it or move it, the registration should be great. Any que oh, There's a couple questions. Let me get over there so I can read those. First question, uh, does the future keep the image from bleeding and distorting? Uh, yes, it does. Um, and is it the same process to print a photo? Um, or are there steps uh, simpler? Would, I could print any image to a piece of wood. I mean, you're basically just using the wood as your whatever, t-shirt, canvas, whatever, okay? So it just, it doesn't see it. Uh, it's just basically, you're telling it where to print. If I wanted to print a photograph on a piece of wood, I would definitely have to adjust that as well. Now it might take some practice to get the skin tones right, like the levels of white ink versus the, if you don't use white ink and those type things. coming out quite nicely. Yeah, we'll be doing uh, more tech talks on the canvas printing uh, and things like that, bring uh, photography. Um, I do have a copy of a tech talk that I did previously, so if you do need that, create a support ticket on our uh, support system, and uh, I can email that over to you if needed. Still doing good. Let's see if I can slide in. Printing can you hold on one second? Let me slide this tripod in here, right? There we go. These things never get old watching them create. But these can be useful tricks for doing all kinds of different arts and crafts projects, scenery, things like that. There's not too many places out there on the market to do full color imagery printing to wood. So think of it that way. When the color goes down is when the cool part happens. All right, another question. If the object you're printing is going to be an outside piece, would you need to do a protective coating on the image? I would believe so, um, just for the simple fact that it uh, that sun is pretty pretty evasive, so it'll burn stuff off. But yeah, you after it's been printed, I'm going to show you the like the way I finish it. And once it's finished, then I can add whatever I want to it. I've actually epoxied an image before, 
um, that uh, that's been printed. So yes, you can add protective coverings to it. Because once it's printed and you put the post treatment on there, then it pretty much locks that image in. So yeah, technically, if you're looking at this, I could have just printed the image without a white underbase. But what that would do would also blend with the color of the wood and make it look a little bit darker, okay? But by printing this white underbase, it's really gonna reflect the color off of that white and it's gonna make the colors pop a little bit better. Maybe I should have made the image smaller for the demonstration. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Would have printed quicker. But oh well. It's still going to look good. Yeah, I actually had a training class one time that somebody didn't believe me that I could print anything. So I took their laptop that they were using. And I put some of the uh, the non-textile pretreatment on there, so it's like a gel coat. So I printed directly a picture on top of their laptop and then sealed it in. Now it's not a permanent type thing. If I did want it to be like protected, I'd put like a piece of uh, contact paper on it or something like that. Um, you know, like shelf liner that's clear, uh, so that way it's protective. Because if if it's on a hard substrate, you can scratch it. Like if I after this is completely done and I just post treat it and stuff. I would be able to scratch it with my nail, but you would also damage the wood itself so because it's a piece of wood. So just tell people not to dig their nails into it. <laughs> so as you can tell, there's not that much movement going on, so that's why that wood stays in place while it's printing. Love that thing called gravity. <laughs> so just so you can see it up a little bit closer here, this is kind of what the white layer that I would want right here. Now I probably could get it a little bit thicker. Let me see if I can get this up here so you can see it without too much reflection. See if I can get it from the front here. It's kind of blocking out the light. There it is. You can tell that it's not really puddling or anything. And it prints right over the cracks and stuff like that. But once the color goes down, I think you'll be impressed. Ooh, I got bright. There we go. Yes, that is correct. Uh, the last question was, uh, so the print head does not actually touch the material. Correct, that's why it is called an ink jet. Uh, printer. It basically jets out a cone of spray from a print head directly down to the substrate. There is about a two millimeter gap between the head and the uh, material that you're printing to, whether it be the shirt or whatever. Oops, I forgot to turn my layer bow light on, so I'm going to hit load. Oops. Oh well, we'll figure it out.
Uh oh, I might have bumped that registration. I think I might have. When I didn't have that layer button activated, it doesn't always do what it's supposed to. But we'll see what it does. I think I'm off registration about a half mil here. Or about a quarter inch. But the cool thing about wood, if it is messed up, all they have to do is sand it off and start again. Yeah, I'm a little off registration. But you can see how nice that those colors pop off of that white. Yep, about a quarter inch off registration. So that's what happens when you don't have your layer button turned on when you're doing a two, uh, two layer image. what happens when you become a DTG printer you become your worst enemy uh, or your worst critic is yourself most of the time you show something to people and they're like oh that's amazing and I'm like I see every flaw <laughs> Yep, it's going to have that little white tail sticking out from one side. I meant to do that. Uh -huh. <laughs> around here go ahead and slide this out all right so that's printing to wood the quick and easy way all right so these are movable see and then what I'm going to use is the DTG post treatment to seal it in. Okay, the post treatment is this stuff right here. Non-textile post treatment. It goes hand in hand with the non-textile pre-treatment as well. All right, this is a gel coat that you can add to uh, hard substrates to make it porous enough where the inks won't beat up. All right, so definitely if you're going to do quantities of this stuff use it in a very well ventilated area um, 
Unless you, it'll make the day go by quicker, I guess. <laughs> if you inhale a bunch of it, not good for you. So I'll do it. I'll do it in here just for this one thing. It's got good ventilation. So, all right. So what I'll do is just kind of spray across it right here, just giving it a light coat. So what that does is basically kind of it has a bonding agent in it, and it helps adhere that to that wood really well. This will dry probably in about 20, 30 minutes, and then it'll be touchable. And then I can stain the piece of wood. I can add uh, any kind of coating I want to it. But before you add any kind of polyurethane or anything like that, make sure that that stuff's dried probably at least 24 hours, the, the post treatment, because sometimes it can bubble up polyurethane. But yeah, let's piece these together again. And then if I wanted to, to make it like a sign or something like that, I would probably put pieces of wood, like little one by uh, one or one and one by one and a half, like little runners or something like that. Cut it just smaller than this width and just screw it to the back of this. And then it can sit against a wall or something to that order and it keeps them together. So, yeah. Well, I hope this has been informative. All right. All right, so this is for us to see what this bad boy can do not to be a perfect day today. <laughs> Love this. Okay. All right, so from here, I'm going to, you could speed up your drying process if you wanted just by sledding it over here on your heat press pad. I don't press it at all because I don't want the, to damage the wood, but just the heat from it sitting there works really nicely. All right, and then with the little template line, I could leave it on there if I was doing a bunch of those and just keep reprinting, or just wipe it off with a little bit of rubbing alcohol, a magic eraser, and you're good to go. All right, so does anybody have any questions as of right now? All right. But if not, then uh, yeah, I think I will go ahead and call this Tech Talk a uh, success. And yeah, if you need a recording of it, definitely you can either call into uh, the front desk or get in touch with us on our Facebook group or also uh, just contact the support department. I can email you over all kinds of different Tech Talks and stuff like that on different subjects that you might be having. Um, so if you need to, you can go to support.coldesi.com and you can also just go to uh, call into our 877 number. I um, hope you all like this uh, webinar and everything like this. Um, you're welcome for having you. <laughs> and you recommend standing after rather than before printing. Yes, because there's sometimes, I mean, it depends on how much you want the image to pop, okay? If you stain after the fact, then it can affect the colors of the images, not really too much. Um, but if you stain it beforehand, yeah, definitely print with a piece of, uh, um, with a white underbase like I just did. Uh, so that way it blocks out that stain color. But sometimes stain can migrate, so just be careful with that. All right, so it's one of those things you're just going to have to practice with. All right, guys, so I hope this was informative. Uh, definitely tune in to other Tech Talks. We're going to be coming up with some uh, different subjects and things like that. If you have any suggestions or comments or anything, please contact us and then we can gear some of these tech talks around things that our customers need. So talk to y'all soon and I'll be talking to you on the phones. Have a great day.